Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. This is going to be a quick one, but I was really interested to check out the performance of the new integrated Intel UHD 750 graphics. I recently got my hands on a new 11th Gen i5 11600K, and this is going to be going in a pretty nice build that'll be coming up on the channel in the next few days, but before I really get to that build, I wanted to see how these new integrated 750 graphics handle gaming. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a big fan of the AMD APUs with their integrated Radeon GPUs. But when it comes to Intel and their integrated graphics, they were really slacking up until they released the mobile Tiger Lake CPUs with those built-in Iris Xe graphics. They have one with 80 execution units, one with 96. I've tested both on my channel. I'm a big fan of them. I think they perform really well for a low wattage chip. But when it comes to their new 11th gen desktop CPUs, I really do think that they missed the boat. Because when it comes to the new UHD 750, instead of running 80 or 96 execution units, we only have 32. But we're basically running at the same speed, 1.3 GHz, and these are overclockable in at least the K-series i5s and i7s. And I completely understand that Intel is relying on these CPUs to be just CPUs, and you're going to add a dedicated graphics card. But with GPU availability, and especially prices right now, there's a lot of people turning to integrated graphics, at least for the time being, waiting for those prices to come down and for the cards to come in stock. So in this video, we're going to see if the new 11th Gen UHD 750 is a viable option, at least for the time being, because later on down the road, you can always upgrade once you get your hands on a video card. Okay, so before we jump right into testing, just give you a quick look here. As you can see, we have those UHD 750 graphics. And unfortunately, in my test, I cannot display the speed of the GPU because nothing is recognizing it right now, not even GPU-Z. I've tried Afterburner, Hardware Info, and we just can't get the speed, but this should be running at 1300 megahertz. And if you did want to do some integrated GPU overclocking, you could do it from the BIOS, or you could install something like Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, which does have the option and it will give us the speed right now, but not while we're in a game. So we're sitting at 1300 megahertz or 1.3 gigahertz on that GPU. When it comes to system memory, I have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 4000 megahertz. I mean, the faster RAM will help out with these integrated GPUs. And obviously we're using that 11600K, which will make a bit of a difference in gaming because we do have higher clock speeds, but this is still going to give us a good idea of how those UHD 750 graphics perform. First things first, ran a couple GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. This is Night Raid with an 11,233. Next up, Fire Strike with a 2,407. And finally, Time Spy with a really low score of 809. I actually thought we'd hit the thousands with Time Spy, but unfortunately not. But now it's time to jump right into some gaming. I got about 10 games to test here. And first up, we have Overwatch, 1080p, medium, low mix, and performance is actually really great. I got an average of 76 FPS out of this one, and in my opinion, it's fully playable. Next up, Original Skyrim, 1080p, medium settings, it's running at 60. I did try to take this up to high, but we were around 56 to 58, so I just backed it on down and we can run this at full speed. CSGO 1080p with a medium low mix, I averaged 73 FPS, and going into this I thought we'd get much better out of it, and of course if you just drop it all down to low you'll be good to go, but uh, I really thought that we'd get a higher frame rate out of these settings here. Valorant is just one that performs really well on low-end systems. 1080p, medium, we got an average of 135 FPS. I was really impressed by this, but then again, it's a very easy game to run. They've optimized this really well. World of Warcraft, 1080p, medium settings, uh, that little slider is set at 5, and we're running at a constant 60. I mean, it performs really well, and there's a lot of stuff going on screen. You might have to drop some of these down or even take it down to 900p, but Warcraft will be playable on these integrated graphics. I'm out of range. 
Here's another one that I thought was going to perform much better than it did. Rocket League 1080p with performance settings. We only got an average of 68 FPS by the end of this match. When it comes to Fortnite and integrated graphics, I always use that new performance mode, and it seems to work really well on integrated Intel GPUs and AMD. But when it comes to the UHD 750 graphics, I did have to take this down to 900p to get a nice smooth rate out of it. Uh, at 1080p, it would drop below 60. Forza Horizon 4 didn't do too well. By the end of this, I had an average of 51 FPS, and keep in mind, we're at 720p low. On the new XE graphics in the mobile chip, and even the Radeon graphics in the 3rd and 4th gen, I can get well over 60 at 900p with this one. Street Fighter V actually performed much better than I thought it would, even though we had to drop it down to 900p for those medium-low settings, and at 1080 you can do it, but you need to be set to low. And finally here, we have GTA 5, 900p, normal settings, and we just can't quite hit a constant 60 with it. And it definitely looks a bit rough. Now, I understand that everybody wants to play these at higher frame rates. But with something like this on integrated graphics, your best bet is to lock this at 30 FPS and jack it on up to high. The game just looks a lot better. It's not going to be as smooth, but we do have way better graphical fidelity, and it's going to run at 30 like this all day long. So overall, it's not great, but some of these games are playable at 1080p. It's definitely a jump up from their last generation UHD 630 graphics. These UHD 750s are definitely doing a much better job. But if I had to choose between the 4th gen Ryzen APUs, I would definitely go with that for integrated graphics. Now, if you're looking to build a system right now, keep in mind these UHD 750 graphics can net you some decent performance in some games at the moment. And when video cards become more available and the prices come down, all you need to do is slap a decent GPU in this thing and you're good to go. But like I mentioned, I really do think that Intel dropped the ball. I was really hoping to see those XE graphics in these desktop chips. Even the 80 execution unit version would have netted us way better performance than this UHD 750 with those 32 built in. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out some of those Ryzen 4th Gen APUs running some games, I got a couple videos. I'll leave some links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on these UHD 750 graphics, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.